All right, so next up, we got one of the more exciting prospects in this year's draft. It's really the Kumar Rocker out of Vanderbilt, the Friday guy. He really burst onto the show back in 19, had that 19 strikeout, no hitter performance against Duke in the playoffs. So I think uh, he's a really interesting prospect for a couple of different reasons. We're going to dive into some film. I'm going to pull up uh, one of his best starts of the season this past year, where he threw a nine innings complete game against Mississippi State, uh, the College World Series champion this year. So I guess, Eugene, well, when you guys look at Kumar, uh, what are some of the things that really jump off the table to you? What makes him the kind of prospect he's kind of matured into? Um, and what does that conversation look like if you're a big league GM that might take a chance on Roger? Yeah, so look, I mean, obviously the body, right? It's the first thing that sticks out. Dude is 6'5", 245, 250, really athletic, with a power fastball, a whole lot of moxie and compete. And to be a 19-year-old and go to Vanderbilt, and to do what he did at that age, at that level, in front of those people, you could see him pitching in a World Series at some point in, in, a, in a clutch situation. Like, he, he's the kind of guy that steps up a lot of the time when the lights turn on, you know? Um, and those guys are not uh, guys like him. They, they don't grow on trees. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of things to like. There's definitely a lot of things to like. He doesn't get hit, right? He doesn't get hit. Uh, the walks are, are definitely too high. Um... I know that obviously with uh, Scott over at Vanderbilt's program, the uh, the development that he's gotten over there has been really good. Uh, I think for him, it, it needs to continue to evolve. I uh, to to be blunt, he is an elite prospect. He's an elite body. I think his body needs to move a little cleaner for him to be sustainable for a really long period of time as a starter. Right, the workload is going to have to be like current, present, how he's moving. I think the workload's going to have to be less for him to get the longevity out of his career. For me, there's way too much vault in the form, okay? Uh, however, having said that, I mean, his body can obviously handle uh, some of those stress levels uh, because he's been able to get away with it for a consistent, sustainable period of time. Uh, so I, I don't think, uh, I think he's an elite arm. I think he's an elite prospect. I think he's an elite person from everything I heard and then uh, all of the dealings with, with uh, uh, you know, he, he actually uh, trains uh, at a buddy's place out in Tennessee during the off season. Um, and I, everything I've heard has been nothing but fantastic about him as an individual and him as a competitor and him as a, as a pitcher. I think he needs to move better for me to be a starter that I'm gonna take a really high chance on. But I feel like for me, uh, I project him right now presently as potentially a really, really high level elite major league closer. All right, so when we're looking at Rocker's film, you know, what are some of the things that stand out to you guys? You know, what are the things that in your opinion make him such a special prospect? Um, and maybe what are some of the things that might be a cause for concern? Well, why don't you start breaking this one down? Yeah, so I mean, obviously, you said first he was 19 years old doing what he did um, at Vanderbilt at the level he did that. Like, it's pretty incredible. There's not a lot of guys who've had that kind of success at that level at that age. So um, he's, he did some amazing feats there back in 2019. I think even in 2021, you can argue like he's one of the best pitchers in the game at that level still. So um, I think just at times for me, the only thing that um, tends to stick out for me with Kumar is that when he's really clean, he has this little almost like pimp and recoil step to it. So you can kind of see there a little bit there. Um, pimp spinach a little bit, has this little hop at the end. It just looks smooth, it's a little more effortless, um, but at times, there, there are definitely times when he's pitching where he tries to be a little too overpowering, in my opinion, tries to do a little too much. Um, Tenses up a little early, yeah. opens up a little too much, but vaults just a little too much. Yeah, so it just gets a little stiff and, and just not as smooth, not as clean. I think that's going to hinder him a little bit. If you, if you can't find out how to get back to being as clean and as easy as you can more consistently, then I think that's going to be a little bit of an issue he's going to run into over time. Um, whether that's um, you know either a longevity standpoint or just affecting this in game too. So um. yeah, and to be clear, like I, I know I talked about him as being like an elite closer. Like, do I think he could be a starter in the big leagues? Yes, hundred percent. Doing the things the way he's doing them now, not not as much. If you look back to the film in 2019, like if you watch it. The arm is matching playing better. Is that a perfect move? Do I love that move? No, no. There's a lot of better moves there with the arm, right? Like if we go back, let's go to the landing position right here, okay? So we get, let's frame it back one more, right? So when we get here, right, we want to see that arm up, 
and we want to see that body close. So as we rotate, this forearm can drop in and catch and just get whipped right around like a tornado, right? Uh, for him, here in 19, it's going to do that more, right? So no, keep going. Roll it, roll it, roll it, right? So we're seeing him release more in line with his trunk. His forearm is going to work around more. It's cleaner. Like Will said, it looks a little bit looser, a little easier. There's better D-cell moves. He's pimping the finish a little bit better. He's stopping more effectively. It's more stable. Now it just looks like he gets a little tense, a little too quick. And even though he's staying closed okay, right, he, he's still wanting to open and gets a little bit stiff. And then this wants to climb up and over, right? Yeah. So go ahead and play this one. Forward, forward, forward. So for me, his hips already, he's, he's not down yet. He's still going to keep carrying. They're already in line this way. And as that hip opens with that arm not being up, that's taking his body this way, but this isn't in a position for that to happen yet. I need that arm to be up just a little bit sooner. But yeah, because of the kind of athlete he is, right? Like, he's the kind of guy that that might be a fix would say, hey, when you are at your best, you pimp the finish, you have it a little bit smoother. It's just, it's, it's easier, it's more effortless. And that might be something you give him and he finds that real quick. So there's been times this year even where it's been that way. It just hasn't been as consistent as it was in 2019. Mm -hmm. And Eugene, this is what you're referencing to in terms of just trying to get these guys lined up. So for you, this is a little bit too high in your opinion? Yeah, when you're, when you're looking at this angle right here, when you think about how the body works, right? Our spine is going to rotate around an axis, okay? If we're throwing from over here, our spine is going to rotate like this. If we're going to throw from a higher slot, we need to create arch at landing and still rotate around that same axis. When that spine goes, our humerus, our upper arm, needs to rotate around the same plane. And our humerus has to whip around it and do the same exact thing. It doesn't matter what slot you throw from, right? Guys that throw from high slots and do it well and healthy for a long period of time, they throw sidearm. They just do it on an angle. Does that make sense? It's not their arm raising with their trunk standing still. It's their body creating flexion at landing, right? So it can rotate and the arm can catch around. And, and that's just not happening as much now as it was before. And I also feel like that's why the command, you know, is, is what I feel like the command could improve with that as well. Usually the guys with the best command, you see that happening as well. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, Rocker, his father was an NFL defensive lineman, so you can definitely see the physicality where he's big frame. You can see maybe on one of those, on maybe some of the ones where maybe it's a little high, those could be the ones where he's trying to add a little bit, but the way in which he's trying to add it might not be a way in which he captures energy most efficiently, which could work for him in those pitches where he can be able to get what he's looking for. But it sounds like it's maybe not done in a way where it's as efficient as maybe what it could possibly be. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, so, I mean, just between the physicality and, I mean, this year, it's kind of funny the way that Jack Leiter stole the show. If you look at Rockers numbers, he improved really in almost every single category this year outside of walks, which went up from 1.9 to 2.9. So I think when you look at what he did, the level and the kind of games that he pitched in this year and in 2019, I think he can definitely do it the next level. I don't think there's a question about it. Um, he missed bats. He missed bats a ton this year. He's looking at whiffery about like forty-one percent. Uh, so I don't think it's a question. He has pitches. Me, he's got a sixty-five fastball. His slider is a seventy. So you're looking at two pitches that are almost plus plus. So he could fill in like possibly in the rotation or maybe even in like the back of the bullpen. You look at a guy last year, Garrett Crochet, where he ended up going in that top ten, and he was in the big leagues by the end of the year, and he ended up making an impact for the White Sox, and he will this year. So he could be one of those guys, or he could be a guy that ends up being a starter, and he's got two plus pitches, and he's able to really do some damage with that on the mound in the starting rotation. So I know yeah. it's interesting. You talked about maybe where he fits in. I think for you, you talked about more of like a reliever role in your opinion. Yeah, that's that's exactly why I feel like that, right? Like so, so for him, I feel like in two years he could be in the big like with with limited development at present ability. He could be in the big leagues in two years with two plus pitches, and if you keep his workload down, he can give you a long enough career out of that, like before getting, and look, the, the return rate on, on surgeries isn't bad either, even if that ever was to happen, right? 
Um, I feel like he uh, he's a guy that you can uh, put a safe bet on to be a, a quality reliever for a consistent period of time and, and miss bats, right? Uh, again, I would want him in a lab, I'd want numbers, and uh, I'd want to manage and monitor his, his workload accurately.